What's going on guys? Welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to show you one of my favorite three-point attachments that I actually built myself and they're something that's really handy to have around and really easy to make so I think you're going to like that. But before we check that out, of course, we got to do chores. So let's get them done. All right. So we got all the cows fed over here. I didn't think you guys needed to see me do that again because you've seen me do it a few times already. Today we're gonna move the winter hay, or we're gonna move the hay to the winter pasture in the truck because it's raining a little bit and I'm feeling like a wimp and I don't wanna get wet. So let's head over there and feed those cows. All right, here we are. So if you're feeding cows by yourself out of the back of a truck, there's the right way to do it and there's the wrong way to do it. And the important thing to remember here is to put your truck in first gear if you got a manual that's easy but if you got an automatic you got to remember to put it in first gear and put it in low range so it doesn't get away from you I got one more thing to do while we're here. I bought him a protein tub. I know I said I wasn't gonna do it. I was just gonna feed him hay, but this last week we've had a pretty big problem with cattle breaking out of this pasture. So I guess they were trying to tell me something like they weren't getting what they needed. So I upped their hay a little bit and I'm giving them the protein tub, you know, if there's ever a time of year to spoil them, it's right now. So that's what we're doing. But anyway, I lured you in with the promise of a cool three-point implement. So let's go back to the ranch and hook it up and I'll show you what it's all about. All right, so here we are back at the ranch. Let's get this thing hooked up. That's probably, oh shoot, I don't know, let me stand back. That tall. All right, so basically what this thing is, is just a poor man's loader. See, my tractor doesn't have a front end loader. I have access to a loader, but it's kind of a pain sometimes to have to run all the way over there to get it when I need it. So this thing, I can use to lift stuff out of my truck off of trailers, just basically pick up any heavy things that are just a little bit too heavy for me. So if you look closely at the way I built this, I made the actual arm, the top link itself, and then this is the pivot point here. So the reason for doing that, there's actually a good reason for that. And that is that since you have your pivot point there, it allows or it makes it so that the arm, well, like you saw, I can touch this arm all the way down to the ground or I can lift it up over 10 feet in the air. If this was just a typical three point setup, this arm would only move as much as the three point arms moved. Let me give you guys a good shot of how that pivot point moves. All right, so I do have more reason to hook this thing up than just to show it to you guys. I actually have a couple jobs that I need to do with it. So let's run back up to my house and I'll show you how this thing works. All right, guys, so we're back here at the shop and I have got these two heavy items sitting on trailers that I need to get off of the trailers. Now, in the last video, you guys saw me trying to get this 
this tote of rice off of this trailer. It's really heavy. Um, and it kind of got me thinking, the one disadvantage of that arm is that it's so long, it puts so much leverage on the three point that it really struggles picking up heavy things. In fact, sometimes it won't even do it. So what I've been wanting to do is weld another attachment point a little bit closer to the three point hitch itself so that you could lift from that point on heavier items, you know, that are hopefully smaller and you don't need that extra reach. Um, so before we try to take this stuff off the trailer, I think we should go ahead and weld another eye on there and we can test that out and see how it works. All right guys, so let me try to show you kind of what, what my idea here is. So right now, I don't even know if it's in the frame, but our eye is way over here. So I'm thinking if I put another eye about right there, that's gonna give me a lot more lifting power, but it's still gonna be out far enough away from the tractor where I could lift up some decently sized items. So I've already got this plate cut out um, because like I say, I like to start projects and then finish them a few months later. So this thing's ready to go. And I've got the beveled edge here. And the reason that you do that is you'll get a much stronger weld because the weld has more surface area to burn into. So in order to make this joint as strong as we can possibly make it, and I don't know if I'm gonna go like here or there, I haven't decided yet, but we've already got this ground pretty smooth. We need to get all this rust off of here. It's good to even get the mill scale off of there. It's not 100% necessary, but it will make a stronger weld if you get right down to the bare metal. So the other day I was telling somebody about mill scale and he did not know what it was. So I thought, you know what? That's probably something I should explain. I keep getting a bad glare. Okay, so on this piece of metal, you see where we're dark gray up here and then we're shiny down here. This dark gray that you see is mill scale and that's just from the process of producing the steel that what's left behind. And this is where I've grounded ground all the mill scale off. And when you're making a weld that's critical that you want to be really strong, it's best to get that mill scale off of there. All right, see, there you go. 30 seconds of work and that is gonna be a much better weld because of it. All right, so you guys know my philosophy. I like to tack things up first, give them a once over, make sure everything is straight and where I want it, because it's a lot easier to just pound those tacks off than it is to cut and grind entire welds off. I think that looks pretty good though, so I'm gonna go ahead and burn it in. All right guys, so this thing is almost ready to be used. Well, technically it is ready. I mean, I'm done working on it, but it's so hot right now that I wouldn't want to put any kind of stress on that weld because you would really, uh, you increase the risk of cracking it or breaking it when it's this hot. So we're gonna go ahead and let this cool down and then we'll go hook up onto one of those two things and see if this thing will pick it up. All right, so first we're gonna try to pick up this old buck rake with the, uh, with the original picking eye. And I don't know, let's just try it, see if it'll do it. I don't know how heavy this thing is. It's definitely not as heavy as this bin of rice, but I think it's, it's probably pretty heavy. So we'll just try it and see. All right, I got all the slack out of the chain. Let's see what this thing will do. did it but needed a little bit of help from the hoist but no big deal we can still move it just like that all 
All right, I don't have very high hopes for this working, but we're gonna give it a try anyway. It's a no-go. <laughs> okay, so I don't know if there's one of two things or maybe both things going on there. We're running out of up travel before we can really get that thing off the ground, but it might just be too heavy also. Um, so I need to come up with a shorter linkage to connect the arm to the bin and then I can try it again. But for now, we're just gonna have to say uh, that we, we got defeated on this one. Uh, I hope you guys found that interesting or found it useful and I really hope it might have sparked one of you to think, you know, like maybe I can make that and you should. Um, it's really a pretty simple project and if you just try it, I bet you can do it. Anyway, thanks for hanging out with me tonight guys and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.